In 2014, in Harris County, Texas, a mass shooting left six people dead and one seriously injured. Ronald L. Haskell arrived at his ex-sister-in-law's house looking for his ex-wife. By the time he left their home, six members of the family would be dead. Haskell showed up to the home dressed as a FedEx employee and knocked on the door. 15-year-old Cassidy Stay answered the door, but she didn't recognize her uncle at first. Haskell asked Katie where her parents were, and she told him that they weren't home. After their brief conversation, Haskell left but came back just a little while later. This time, he told Cassidy that he was her uncle and moved to get inside the house. Cassidy tried to close the door on him, but he forced his way past her and into the home. Next, Haskell tied Cassidy up and made her lie face down on the ground. Then he did the same to the other four children in the house. Then he sat and waited for their parents to return home. After Stephen and Katie Stay arrived, Haskell tied them both up and began interrogating them about where his ex-wife was. The family refused to tell him where she was, and that's when the murders began. With all seven members of the Stay family lying face down on the floor of their home, Haskell began shooting each of them in the back of the head, one by one. Stephen, father, Katie, the mother, and three of their children died immediately, with one of the other children dying on the way to the hospital later on. 15-year-old Cassidy was the sole survivor. When she was shot, Cassidy had her hand raised in front of the gun. When the bullet was fired, it hit her finger and then grazed her head. She managed to convince Haskell that he had killed her by playing dead. After Haskell drove away in the family car, on his way to kill his ex-wife's parents as well, Cassidy mustered up the strength to call police and tell them what was happening. Thanks to her brave actions, police were able to track Haskell down and apprehend him after a three-hour standoff. Haskell was eventually convicted of six counts of capital murder and sentenced to death. He is currently on death row, awaiting his execution date. If it wasn't for the amazing heart and heroism of Cassidy Stay, even more people would have died in this brutal crime spree. Even though she had just seen her entire family murdered right before her eyes, she still did everything she could to prevent more lives from being lost at the hands of this violent maniac. Afterwards, an online fundraiser was started for Cassidy, and she ended up receiving over $400,000 in donations. No amount of money will ease the pain of losing her family, but at least now she will be able to take care of herself and hopefully begin the process of building her own future. Richard Speck is one of the most notorious spree killers of all time. One night in 1966, Speck forced his way into a house in Chicago where nine female nursing students lived. That night, he brutally murdered eight of them by strangling, beating, and stabbing them to death. However, one survived. Corazon Amaro, the only survivor in the brutal killings, was the first one to see Speck. She opened the door for him after he knocked on it, but tried to shut it when she sensed danger. Speck overpowered her and made his way inside, and that's when he started his horrific killing spree. Corazon was able to hide under a bed and play dead while Speck went on his frenzied rampage. Speck later said that he forgot about her because he was so drunk. After the man who had just murdered her friends left, Corazon ran for help and eventually testified in court against Speck. Her information was crucial in identifying him as the killer and achieving a guilty verdict. Speck was originally sentenced to death, but it was turned over and he was given eight consecutive life without parole sentences. He died from a heart attack in 1991. Thanks to her quick thinking, Corazon was able to survive that night and help put a dangerous psychopath behind bars for good. Carol Durant survived an encounter with one of the most infamous serial killers in history. While she was walking through a parking lot, Carol was approached by Ted Bundy, one of the deadliest and most brutal men in the world. Bundy was dressed up like a cop, and he told Carol that her car had been stolen and that she needed to file a report with him. They got inside Bundy's Volkswagen, and then he immediately handcuffed her and tried to beat her to death with a crowbar. However, Carol fought back as hard as she could and was able to escape. She went to the real police and gave them important details about Bundy that would eventually lead to his arrest. Carol could have easily been another one of Bundy's victims, but instead she fought for her life and won. Ted Bundy murdered at least 28 women, and maybe even more, but thanks to her toughness and grit, Carol DeRanch wasn't one of them. 
Most people don't recognize the name Alexander Pachushkin, but he is one of the deadliest murderers in Russian history. Also known as the chessboard killer, Pachushkin was convicted of nearly 50 brutal murders. One of the people he targeted was 19-year-old Maria Verichiva. She was three months pregnant at the time of the attack, and luckily she and her unborn baby were both able to survive. Pachushkin met Maria at a metro station and offered her work. With a child on the way, Maria needed money so she agreed to follow him. After walking together for a while, Pachushkin picked a spot to kill her. He shoved her down a 30-foot well, and he was confident that there was no way she could have survived the fall. Then he simply walked away and began looking for another victim. Somehow, Maria wasn't killed by the steep drop, and she managed to avoid drowning at the bottom of the well. Driven by the desire to save her baby, she climbed her way up and managed to scream for help. Even though she went to the police about what happened, they decided not to investigate. But five years later, she was brought in to identify Pachuchkin after he had already killed several more people. He was sentenced to life in prison, but many lives could have been saved if the authorities had simply listened to Maria after she survived his attack. Richard Ramirez is simply evil. This brutal lunatic is also known as the Night Stalker, and his terrifying murder spree has gone down in history as one of the worst of all time. Ramirez also had a strange method of choosing victims. He would check doors and windows, and if they were locked, he would simply walk away. However, if he found an unlocked entryway, he thought it meant that he had been invited in and he would slay whoever was inside. 16-year-old Whitney Bennett left her window unlocked one night to let the breeze in. While she was sleeping, Ramirez entered through the window and viciously attacked her with a tire iron. Whitney realized she was probably going to die, so she decided to play dead. Ramirez thought the murder was complete, so he stole her jewelry and vanished into the night. The attack on Whitney Bennett was so violent and horrific that she needed cosmetic surgery for the severe Severe injuries she suffered. If she had not managed to fool Ramirez into thinking she was dead, he would have continued beating her until she really was. Whitney was a key witness in the case against Ramirez, and he was sentenced to death and executed in 2013. Some people are just born to be fighters, and Teresa Thornhill is definitely one of them. She was attacked by serial killer Robert Black when she was only 15 years old, but thanks to her bravery and fighting spirit, she managed managed to escape after he tried to kidnap and murder her. Black parked his van in front of Teresa's house one day and acted like it was broken down. When Teresa approached him to see if he needed her to call someone for him, he grabbed her and tried to force her into the vehicle. Teresa punched, kicked, and bit him until she could break free and run away. She immediately called the police, but Black was able to flee. Eventually, he was caught, and Teresa testified against her would-be murderer in court. Black was given a life sentence, and he died in prison in 2016. It takes a special kind of person to be able to do what Teresa did that day. Most people wouldn't have the strength and determination to fight for their lives as hard as she did. Robert Black thought he had picked an easy target, but Teresa proved that she was more than ready to handle a life-or-death situation. Kate Moir was kidnapped brutally tortured, and almost murdered by Australian serial killers David and Catherine Burney. This psychotic couple brought Kate to their home and put her through a living nightmare. She was tortured repeatedly and left handcuffed to a bed. She came very close to dying in that house, but luckily she found the strength to make a brave escape. While David and Catherine were both out of the house, Kate managed to free herself and jump out of a window. She immediately went to the police to make a report Report, but for some reason, they didn't believe her at first. Eventually, she convinced them to investigate, and the police discovered that the couple had already killed four people. David confessed to the crimes, and him and Catherine were both sentenced to four life sentences. Jeffrey Dahmer might be the most famous serial killer of all time. The details of his gruesome crimes have been studied for years by psychologists, law enforcement, and fans of true crime stories. Not only did Dahmer brutally murder 17 people, he also collected their body parts and even ate some of them. When police raided his home, they found severed heads in his freezer and fridge, and Dahmer told them that he had been experimenting in ways to bring them back from the dead. Tracy Edwards 
Richards nearly became another of Dahmer's victims, but he managed to narrowly escape just before he was killed. After breaking out of Dahmer's apartment, Edwards ran screaming down the street, covered in blood and asking for help. When police arrived, Edwards led them back to where Dahmer lived, and they found the evidence of Dahmer's earlier crimes. If Tracy Edwards had not escaped that night, there's no telling how many more people would have been killed and eaten by Dahmer. It was obvious that he had no intention of stopping, and in fact, he had been murdering more and more frequently as time went on. Dahmer was convicted of 17 murders and got sentenced to 15 life terms in prison. He didn't serve much of that time, though, because he was murdered by another prisoner shortly after he was put behind bars. Okay guys, that's all for this video. If you liked this one, be sure to check out the recommended videos for more interesting stuff like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our newest content. And let us know in the comments what topic we should cover in our next video. Catch you next time!